Hi everybody, I'm Nigel. I have a channel called Nigel's Modeling Bench, which is doing pretty well, it's five and a half thousand subscribers. And as you can see behind me here, I have uh, quite a few kits in my stash. I thought I'd start another channel and call it Nigel's Land Rover channel because it would appear that having done some work with Land Rovers in kit form, there seems to be a lot of interest in them and also I have a Land Rover Defender 2011 Puma I know a lot of you say what's that you know but um, I love it a bit I it's very very low mileage I bought it new and it's come to a time in its life where it needs a bit of TLC even though I've looked after it and never really taken it off road and kept it clean all the time and stuff it's got no dents or scratches or anything on it um, it's come a time where it needs a bit of TLC and I thought there's a few little jobs on the Puma Land Rover that are probably going to be pretty commonly need to be done um, that cost very very little to do uh, and with some very very simple tools can be done so I thought I'll start a new channel and I'll base it around my modeling but also with a slant towards people that aren't necessarily modelers but people who are just Land Rover enthusiasts that might want to build a model of their favorite Land Rover if it's available. Um, so like for example uh, my Puma uh, Land Rover the headlamp rings the rings that hold the headlamps in absolutely rotten um, rotten I mean like literally just flaking away so Basically, I've bought some new ones, some stainless steel ones from um, from a guy on eBay, I think it was. And when they came, they had no screws, so I've ordered some new screws and stuff. And I realised there's nothing much on YouTube that shows you about fitting those headlamps or adjusting them or anything. So I'm going to do a video on them. Um, but for today, I'm going to look at the model side of things. So quick introduction about what I've got. There are lots of models out there. And with Christmas coming and stuff, you may wish to treat yourself or treat your other half or whatever, or perhaps sit down with your kids and, and make a model of a Land Rover if it's a, if it's a family thing. So what's available out there today, um, going over here, this one is the Hobby Boss uh, Wimmick uh, Wolf. It's got some issues, like for instance, the spare wheel is on the bonnet and it shouldn't be on there and stuff. But if you're not too worried about accuracy and stuff, you could get this kit, build it out of the box and you'll be more than happy with it. It's all covering guns and everything. And just next to it there, you can see there's a little resin upgrade set, which gives you the proper with it wheels and everything. Now above it, there's an old, very old kit, um, which is readily available. It's from a company called Tamiya and it's a Series 2. And it's basically the ambulance with the big box on the back. So that's a lovely kit. If you want to get that very easy to build and always looks good when done. And then next one here, this is another Hobby Boss kit, 135th scale. And this is the RSOV, is it? The American um, Land Rover long wheelbase. Basically came before the Wolf or anything. And it's just really a long wheelbase. Uh, it's a 110 with no doors and no roof and got machine guns mounted on it and a guard on the front for carrying stuff and that and then coming over here this is the 110 this is the the Land Rover 110 um, Wolf again from Hobby Boss uh, this is just basically a um, an army Land Rover with the fiberglass roof it's got the full roll cage inside or the full roll cage behind the seats it's got the steel wheels the plastic uh, grille so it's it's like a proper wolf um, and it has the spare wheel matted on the side through the through the fiberglass roof onto the chassis so it's more accurate than that one um, but that one is a more detailed kit if you like because it's got all the guns and jerry cans and wh whatever have you on there working up from there we've got this is again this is the pink panther again it's a series two uh, long wheel base uh, land rover covered in bits and pieces of ammo and everything I've actually got the photo etch set for that photo etch if you don't know is very very thin brass material that you photo etch out and it makes sort of very very um accurate parts for 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 copying thin stuff like you know your sandboards and stuff you they look more accurate in photo etch metal than they do in thick plastic but again very nice model straight out of the box all you need is some pink and black paint and you're away and then finally above that we've got the Airfix 143rd scale. It's a very old model. It's a Series 3 
um, and it's a 143rd scale, so it's fairly small. It's only, you know, it's only, you know, sort of four inches long. Um, but it is, it's a nice little model when it's made. It's a very old Heller kit, still available. Um, look around for it. So that's 143rd scale, 135th, 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 135th and 135th scale. And then on top of that, we've also got this brand new release from Ravel which is this one and this is the uh, 124 I'm trying to fight with the lights because it's a very very glossy box there we go this is the Land Rover Series 3 long wheelbase station wagon and this is a brand new kit only recently come out it's available from Antics which is a model shop in the UK 2595 um, it's available elsewhere you can pay a little bit more for it, you can pay a little bit less for it, but if you do have an Antics nearby, pop in there and ask them if they'll price match it, and they probably will, and tell them Nigel sent you. So what I'm going to do today is do a review of this kit again. Now I've done a review of this kit on my channel, which is, as I say, Nigel's Modelling Bench, and it's basically a review for modellers. I'm going to do a review again on this channel, uh, and this is for... Land Rover enthusiasts so it's a lot sort of more based against people that might want to go out and build a model buy a model of a Land Rover and build it so let's have a look what's inside this box and uh, I'll get on the bench now and we can get the camera above and have a look okay so here's your here's your box so this is basically what you're going to see in the shop when you go in your model shop or or whatever you might see it online you might see it in Amazon um, and this is what it's going to come like and it will be sealed up on both ends very, very, uh, very typical Revell manufacturer. This is a kit manufacturer. Very, very thin boxes. So be careful about where you where you're chucking it and what you're putting on top of it. But basically, looking around the box, we've got some detail there on the side. It's telling us it's licensed by Land Rover, giving us the date. It's made by Revell of Germany and it's made in Poland. Um, it's telling you to keep the packaging for later questions. I don't quite know what that means. And then we can see on the end, this is kit number seven zero four seven. We can also see here it's 124 scale. It's 19.4 centimeters long. So as you can see, it's you know it's fairly big, and it's got 184 parts. And then when we look on the back of the box, we can see here it's fairly detailed. We've got the two and a quarter petrol engine in there. You can see we've got the steering wheel. You, this has been built as left-hand drive, and we've got the um, you know, dashboard and everything there, all nicely done. We've got the safari roof. And then we've got the uh, the lovely Series 3 front end with the step back grille and um, white steel wheels and then the heater air intake on the side there. So lovely and then we can see a picture of all the sprues. So what do we get inside this box? Oh, it's also telling you on the back here, showing you down here, these are the Revell part paints and glues and stuff you can get. You can actually buy, if you are a total beginner, you can buy a beginner set with a, a knife, some paint brushes and snips and stuff in there. And then you can buy the Revell paints, which can be thinned with water and they're pretty much non-toxic. So there's a, a good one for you to start with. So opening the box, the first thing we find inside, we've got the body shell. And as you can see by looking at it in my hands, it's a fairly decent size. It's got the um, moulding on the outside, no detail really on the inside, but we get all that separately. But we can see there it's a one piece plastic molding so you can glue that to the top of an aerosol can and then spray it to your own colors and everything as you like so what we'll do is we'll get everything out of the box that's in there and this is how it this is how it comes all bagged up and everything and just give the box a shake make sure there's nothing more in there so you can see we've got various bags of sprues now these are the clear parts that piece of paper in there i've done First thing to do if you're going to buy one of these kits is open this bag up, sellotape and put a piece of paper between those two sprues. That's your windows in there and you want to stop them getting scratched. So put a piece of paper between them or put them in separate bags and that will stop them getting scratched. So we've got our bags of parts here. You can see it's all injection moulded onto a sprue. Much like you may remember when you were a kid building Airfix models. Or if you're a youngster now then this is how it all looks when you get it out of the box. So there we go, let's put all that to one side. And there we've got rubber tires there as well. So we'll put all that to one side and we'll start off by looking at the instructions and looking at what you actually get for your money. So this is your typical Revell glossy instruction manual that you get these days. And we can see this kit is a level three 
and I think on the box you will find it will tell you somewhere here where does it say I, I know I've seen it somewhere but a level three I mean, it's basically it's um it's designed to be a fairly simple build so it's not complicated but it ends up as a as you can see it's a beautifully detailed model there very funny as well that tire is not fitted on the wheel properly you would think in their you know their picture on the front of their instructions they would have the tire on properly wouldn't you but never mind so looking inside the instructions here and I'm, as I say I'm basing this on a beginner or a non-experienced modeler so looking inside we've got on the left hand side here this is just some hints and tips in pictorial form on you know using rubber bands to hold big parts together test fitting first before we glue um, you know stirring paint painting stuff waiting for it to dry scraping the paint off where you're going to glue it and bits and pieces smaller parts paint them on the sprues and then we're cutting out decals and using them there and it's basically just basically a guide to, to, to modeling um, and if there's enough interest in this I will build this model on this channel um, and do it totally based on beginners so you will actually be able to follow me step by step and see how we go um, this is what's called the legend now these images basically as, as you move forward it becomes self-explanatory it's telling you here that this must be glued this is not glued use some paint got the question mark there showing optional parts You've got two arrows breaking apart that means remove it You've got a drill there make a hole two times number of working steps wait for the time to dry so can apply decals and that's basically what it's telling you there and then going through here it's got telling repeat the same procedure on the other side and it's telling you to um, use their decal soft setting solution for decals you probably don't need that on this model to be honest and they're recommending using their own glue which is this stuff here where is it this one here this is Revell contact to clear um, I wouldn't recommend that one I don't find it very good I would recommend this one or any white PVA glue such as your gator glues and stuff wood glues anything that dries clear is great for gluing in clear parts so this is your paint color callouts and you can see here now if you're a, if you're a beginner you can really really limit what you buy they're telling you to buy aluminium silver metallic um, iron metallic and where's over the page no that's it so they're telling you to buy those three colors you don't need to buy all three of them just buy a silver and your model will look absolutely great and then we've got here we've got black silk matte we've got anthracite matte we've got gloss black and we've got any over here any black snow so you could just get away with just having that one the anthracite matte and then get yourself a clear varnish and you can paint over that and it will become gloss so and it's telling you here you have to mix your colors here black silk matte and dark gray that's going to give you a very very dark gray color okay so you could get this one here and that one there and end up with the same okay so you don't need to buy all these paints you can get away with some some of them and also you don't have to paint it the same colors as they're saying in the instructions it's a Land Rover you can paint it any color you like obviously so this is what we call the sprue layout and this is just basically showing you in pictorial form all the plastic sprues like this one here is showing you these sprues laid out so you can see where they are on there so if you if you're working through the model and you get to here and you're looking for 85 you can see that we've got sprue H and 85 is on there and there it is H85 okay so if, if you need it as a guide it's there if you need it and then we've got our clear parts and stuff down here and our tires and everything so starting off the build as I say it's fairly simple but it does give you a nice detailed model at the end so we've got a pair of engine halves going together there and then we're going to add the sump and add the um, cam cover on there or the rocker cover should I say and then we've got a distributor going on there you can paint the distributor cap orange if you want to make it look aftermarket and then we've got what I think is the breather on the back of the engine then we've got a very very simple carburetor I think that's supposed to be an SU it doesn't look much like one to me and they're telling you to paint the dash pot black and I think it should be silver um, oil filler there exhaust manifold oil filter front cover 
um, pulley with the belt, the fan belt and everything, and then the fan on there. And then we've got the bottom hose going on the side of there, and then we're going to add that to the engine. So that's all nice. Then we're going to add this gearbox, LT76 gearbox, very, very simple. And it's also got the, um, the four-wheel drive box on the side of there as well. So that's fairly simple in construction. And then we've got the front axle here, gluing the um, diff cover on there, painting that black. Then we've got our floor here upside down and it's telling us we need to drill some holes so we can get some small drills like these here, like a little drill, or you can use the point of a knife to make the hole. And I'll show you all that if you're interested. And then we go here, we're going to paint our rubber of mats black inside and then we're going to paint. We've got left hand drive and right hand drive. They've got separate centre consoles for left and right hand drive and I think they would be the same. Um, people out there that know Series 3s can tell me this. I would have thought the centre console would be the same on left and right hand drive because with the LT76 and the, um, the four wheel drive box on the side, I believe the levers are fixed to the gearbox. You can't move the levers around for left and right hand drive. And also on here, they tell you to put the handbrake levers on the wrong sides as well. So we'll, we'll cover that in a minute. Um, so we've got the front hubs going on as you can see the front swivels aren't all complicated like the real thing they're fairly simple and they're going to be fairly strong so if you want to build this and roll it around on the, on the table afterwards you can. We're adding the leaf springs there onto the front and adding the front shock absorbers and it's asking us there look to paint our petrol tank on the chassis and then we're going to add the exhaust system. Add the rear axle, a big Salisbury axle going in there. As we all know, the Series 3s had the Salisbury's and then Salisbury's were an option on the 110s and then they dropped them completely. So, uh, yeah, as time went on, they just got weaker and weaker and more and more poorly made, didn't they? So adding the rear leaf springs there, um, it's telling us the front of the shock absorbers is going to go into those mounts there. Putting the engine in, ready to connect up to the exhaust pipe, adding the prop shafts putting the shroud on the radiator and then fitting the radiator in and as you can see we've got the bottom and top hose going in there. Then we're going to add the floor to the chassis and here you can see it's telling us on the right hand drive to put the handbrake on the left side and on the left hand drive put the handbrake on the right and as we all know that handbrake should be underneath your driver's leg so change that around. Then we've also got the the gearbox is showing the transfer levers swapped around as well and as far as I know they should always be like that not like that okay so let me know in the comments below I believe that the gearbox should be when you're looking from behind so if you're sat in the back looking forward you should have the gear stick on the left the yellow lever in the middle which I believe is four and low wheel drive I can't remember now I never had a series two or three I had a series one and then we've got the red lever, which I believe is the um, high low, and that goes to the right hand side like that. So I don't believe I think this is um, false. I don't think you should be using that. The right hand drive, as they suggest there. Now then seats, we've got lots of different options for seats. We've got the flat seats there. OK, and there's three of those. And then we're going to use just two of them for the German version, it says. But you can have two seats in the front of your English version if you want. So you've got separate grab rails there on the back of them, or you can put the three seats together and have one long grab rail across. And then for the seats behind the driver, you've got a little seat frame there going together and then we're adding the back, the, bake, the back of the seat onto the main seat, adding the base to the, to the frame and then adding another grab rail on the back. Or we can have these vinyl contour seats. Again, there's three of them. We can just have the two. We can have all three. And then we've got the seats behind the driver again, different style of seats going onto a different frame. So now we can choose whether we want to do three or two seats of the flat type with that type of frame in the back, or we can have three or two seats of that type with a different type of frame in the back. Then we've got the side mounted rear seats, so you can add those or not, not put them in, whatever you want to do. Then we've got the front bumpers, so you've got the, you can cut the number plate off if you don't want the number plate on top of the bumper, and then you can add the number plate to the front of the bumper there. You can add it on either side if you want to, it's telling you to drill the holes to have it on the left hand side, but you could put it on the right if you wanted to. Inner side panels, obviously this is all body colour because it's all plain metal, and then we've got our fuel filler there. 
we've got the uh, rear rear door there with the, the black lining inside and the grab handle on the door. And then we're going to add all that to the floor, put the front bumper on. Now we're going to build up the left-hand drive dashboard. So we've got the pedals, the lower dash, and then we've got the, um, the, the main dash there. And it's telling us to paint those levers there, put some gauges in with the decals, and then paint those levers there, which are the levers for, for opening the vents on the front of the bulkhead. And then it's telling us to drill a hole there and fit the steering column and everything into the bottom of the steering box, into the bottom of the uh, dashboard, and that gives you a left-hand drive. And then for right-hand drive, you do all the same again, but obviously just with the steering wheel on the right-hand side. And then again here, we've got left-hand drive. We're adding the, um, the brake servo, brake master cylinder, heater and fan motor there, and then the main inlet pipe for the heater. And this is the steering column here going in for the uh, for the left hand drive right hand drive you're doing the same again but obviously all on the other side then down here it says version one version two so you can decide to drill your wings out so you can have wing mounted mirrors or you can drill the door hinges out and have door hinge mounted mirrors which I think I would do every time and then here we're going to drill holes out of the left hand drive or the right hand drive and that's to decide where your air intake goes where it goes into the side where the air intake goes for the heater. Going over the page here, it's telling us to drill here for left-hand drive and here for right-hand drive for the number plate and rear number plate light. Now, in my experience, they could be on either side. Um, most Land Rovers I've seen that are right-hand drive have this, the number plate on the left-hand side. So I don't know what they're talking about there. So you can put it on either side if you want to. Then we're going to add our headlamp buckets, glue our dashboard into the body there. That's going to glue in there quite easily. Adding our glazing to our windows. You could leave that till after if you want because it goes in from the outside. So you could leave that till after you've painted the body and everything. You could glue the windscreen in, paint the body and then add your glazing. Adding the headlight glazing in there. Adding the grille onto the front which is painted silver. And then we've got more glazing going in and as I say again you can paint all your body and then put this in last if you want to because all the glazing goes in as you can see with the rear from the outside so you could completely finish your model blow the inside out and then put your um and then put your glazing in then we've got the safari roof and it's telling us to drill a load of holes in the safari roof and then it's telling us to add these clear windows to the top of that quite well therefore I do not know um Please let me know in the comments below. I would have thought if it was going to have clear access panels in the in the roof, then you would have clear holes in the roof of the actual body so you could actually see through them. But please let me know in the comments below. As I say, I'm not very familiar with Series 3s. Spare wheel there going onto the roof. I would say probably would look better putting it on the bonnet than on the roof. Um, I'm not sure if they, they ever had them on the roof, but uh, please let me know again in the comments below. Then we're going to drop our body onto the onto the chassis. We've got some positive points there. We have those big pegs in there, and you've got these big holes in there for it to fit on. So that'll fit on there, lovely. Then we're going to add our safari roof, the roof rack. Then we're onto our side lights and indicators. Again, on the back, indicators and rear lights. Then we've got some grab rails going on there, grab handles, little tow bar in the middle, reflectors going in the back. And then we've got, it's telling us to do left-hand drive number plate, right-hand drive number plate. You can make your choice which side you put it on. It's telling us to paint the inside of the wheels black there because when we put the white wheels on the outside, we're going to see the black through the slots in the wheels. Add on the, um, the hub, don't glue that, and then fit the, the tyres over the top. Batteries going in. Uh, that's some sort of filler there, I think, some sort of reservoir. And then we've got another reservoir for something there. Then we've got the air intake going there on top of the air filter and going into the carburetor. We're going to add our bonnet, put the wheels on both sides. See this symbol here, that arrow, that means put it on both sides. And then we've got version one, version two. So it's telling us that if you're going to do version two, you need to cut something off to make them fit nicely. And then on version one, You've got them going down into the into the mirrors there. I mean, you could put all four mirrors on if you wanted to. It's a Land Rover. You can do what you like. And then you've got the right-hand drive aerial going on that side, left-hand drive aerial going on that side, and then you've got an aerial there in the middle if you want to do that instead. 
So you've got all these different options. And then you've got your air intake there for your heater, which goes on either side, determining whether it's left or right hand drive. And we've got that lovely, typical old um, British Leyland uh, folding bonnet stay there. So it's all very nice. And then in the back, they give you a painting guide and they're telling you all these colors to paint everything. And if you remember, we go back to the front where it has our paints and it gives them all A, B, C, D, E, F, G all the way through. And it's giving you those colors there. OK, so whoops, there we go. So that's the instructions. Let's have a look at some of the parts. Oh, let's look at the decals first. These are your typical water slide decals or water slide transfers or if you're in America, you call them decals. And there we go. That's the decal sheet there. So you can see there we've got basically all our instrument and everything looking there. And then here we've got, let's get some better lighting for you. There we go. So here we've got the instruments and everything, and then we've got all our different letter number plates there. So we've got the, um, the Land Rover there for the dealership. Then we've got two German number plates there. We've got the old fashioned British type with the aluminium and black paint number plates. Netherlands, France, the more modern um, Great Britain, as you see today, with the white on the front, the yellow on the back. And then we've got Austria, Italy. Um, that's Swiss. Then we've got the B for Belgium, Ireland, and then right at the bottom you've got the two American number plates there because America is into their old Land Rovers and they're importing them in their dozens, I believe. So there we go. That's your uh, decal sheets. So let's have a look at some of the plastic and what you basically get. And we'll start off by looking at these tires. So in this rolled up bag, you're going to get five of these vinyl tires. And what you've got to do with these is carefully cut out the inner and then you, you cut that out and then you can um, basically just fit them onto the wheels. They don't need to be glued and they will just fit on the wheels and sit on there. But you can see you've got your typical tread pattern and that these are like your standard size for your series through. I can't remember what size they were now. Were they um, six by 15? I can't remember. But they were cross ply tires, weren't they? So there we go. We got those tires there. And then we've got our clear sprue, which, as I say, I've got that piece of paper in between. And if we get both of these out, keep the paper between them, it saves the parts getting scratched. And we've got basically here we've got the, the windows, which you can see are very clear. And these are our rear side windows. I'm pointing out there with my fingers. And then we've got the, the actual um, tailgate or the rear door uh, glazing there. This is the um, forward side windows. These are for the doors in the back. And then we've got the rear facing little glazed panels there. So yeah, lovely. And then we've got these skylights here. I don't know why they're clear, but um, there we go. That's them. And then we've got our front door glazing there and then our windscreen. And you can see there's a tiny scratch on that one there. That's why I put the paper in between to stop it getting scratched anymore by the, by the two sprues. So that can go over there out of the way. Right, we've seen the body. Um, one piece body, got integral moulded door handles, integral moulded rear uh, cross member, no rust looks, amazing. Um, got a little tab to cut off on there. And then all the uh, galvanised stripping around the outside is all integrally moulded in as well. So we could mask that up and paint that or just paint it by brush if you're a real steady hand. Remember we've got a roof to go on over here. We've got all the seam lines in there, lovely. We've got the uh, separate little headlamp, little trims that go around them there, which are very nice. I would love to put those on my uh, 90, but I can't because mine's a later version and I've got holes in these front panels down beneath there. You can get the backing panel to go over, but I don't see the point. You may as well just stay standard. So um, there we go. And then we've got our bonnet hinges there. And we've got some interior detail there in the roof, as we said, fuel filler there. So all in all, nice, quite a nice body, quite rigid and quite a nice size model as well. It's 124 scale, so it's going to be quite a big model. Right, I've brought the camera down a bit closer so you can see things a bit better. And we'll start off by looking in this bag. I'm not doing these sprues in any particular order. I'm just getting them all out of the bags. So here we go. So start off here. This is our engine. And we can see it's the two and a quarter litre petrol engine. We've got exhaust manifold two sides of the engine there 
we've got a uh, water header tank is that I'm guessing and then we've got the rocker cover in that manifold and part of the cylinder head on there and then I think that there is the breather but yeah you can see there's some nice um, detail on there so you can paint that out whatever color you like if you're going to do a military engine you could paint that lovely um, light, light bluey green color It'd be very nice indeed and then we've got the the front grill which is very nice you've got the, the grill mesh molded in there um, it's a shame it isn't a bit deeper you could sand it from behind then and get rid of it um, we've got mirrors there which we don't use these are like the later type mirrors like you see on the latest 90s um, so not quite sure why they're in there but it would appear that Revel are going to do or Revel should I say are going to make very various versions of the Land Rover there's your headlamps there with the bulbs inside that's a nice touch and they're going to glue up inside the front in there so that's lovely and then we've got the two different types of mirrors you've got wing mirrors there and the door mirrors there okay so that's all very nice and then we've got this is the engine this is the, the dashboard's going to go here so this is what you'll see when you look down in there through the engine bay that's going to fit up under there windscreen there with the um it's got the uh, the front flaps on there that open up the vents we've got the bonnet there it's got a bit of sink mark in it but it's got riveting detail on it which is very nice and then we've got the um, detail inside the support and everything fuel filler there all very nice indeed and then this is the inside of the um, of the bodywork. You can see we've got these nice big tabs on there that are going to fit tightly into the floor. If I get the floor out here just to show you what I'm talking about, you will see that uh, this will all go together quite easily. You can see you've got those great big tabs on there and that's just going to fit in those big tabs in the side there. So you know it's not a difficult kit to build um, I would say a beginner should be able to do it no problem um, and certainly if you've built a few models in the past you'll have no problem with it at all if you're in a Land Rover enthusiast you'll have no issue because if you can fix a Land Rover you can put this together so um, there we go so that's the interior side detail you can see we've got the grab handles there and we've got the handles there for opening the doors and then we've got the same on the rear panel there you've got the grab handle on the, the handle on the inside the grab handle goes in those holes so it's all very nice indeed and as we say we've got the floor there with a seat box you've got some little bits of detail there I would prefer to build it with the two seats rather than the three but it does appear in pictures I've seen many series threes have the three seats across the front so there we go and that's the front of the seat box and this is your aperture here for your handbrake so they, they've put them both in there I'm not sure I'll have to check some references and some photographs I'm not sure if they're supposed to be like that but I'm sure that the right hand drive has the the um, the actual handbrake is underneath the driver's leg and left hand drive it would be the same it's also worth noting on here you can see that the in right hand drive form the uh, driver gets more room than in left hand drive form as you can see there so there we go and then we can get these bags out of the sprue here. These sprues out of the bag, sorry. Got a set of tape stuck there. So we can have a look in here. And we can see that in here we've got these are all our grab rails for the seats. We're going to add on. They look quite fiddly, but they'll be easy enough to clean up. We've got our support bar there for the bonnet. We've got the front bumper there, which you can paint like looking like galvanized. And then there's the grab rail for the back door there. And with all this, you, you get all these parts off the sprue. You can get yourself a little pair of these little side cutters to cut the parts off. Or you can use a pair of scissors. Or you can put them down on a flat base and then cut down through with a knife. What you don't do is start trying to twist them and break them off. But um, if you want to see this built as a beginner's build video, then let me know and I will do that. And perhaps you can sit down with your kids at Christmas and watch my videos and build it with me. So there's your roof rack there, all nicely moulded, very, very thin, all quite fiddly. But at the end of the day, it'll all go together lovely. And with a coat of paint on there, it'll look lovely. Sat on the roof, as you can see there. Looking very nice indeed. And then this is the seat frame for, the, um, for one of the versions. This is the seat frame that goes behind the... Uh, this is for the, the second row of doors. So, lovely very nicely detailed 
And then we've got another bag here, which I can see has got the chassis in it. And you will see when you look at this, that the chassis is very, very chunky. It's hollow on the top, but no one's going to see it from the top. So that doesn't matter, but it's very, very chunky. So if you do want to build this with your youngster, your youngster wants to play with it, play with it gently. It will be absolutely fine. You can see we've got the brake servo there and we've got some different seats going on here. In fact, these seats aren't even in the instructions, so I'm not quite sure what they are. Um, you've got lots and lots of seats in this kit. So there's one, two, three, four, five. There's six seats. So we'll keep a count. So we've we've already counted up six seats. We haven't seen any seats on other sprues yet. So there's six. <laughs> and then we've got chassis. And then we've got our air intakes for left and right hand drive, diff cover, handbrake. And you've got your steering column there, you see, with the um, indicator on the side. Windscreen wipers. Got the transfer box lever there, with pedals. It's all very nicely detailed and uh, all very simple to go together. It's big chunky parts. There's nothing there that's too flimsy and um, you'll have no problem with it. And then we've got an exhaust system here, which is basically a one piece exhaust system there. But then you've got this separate half of the silencer going on. So it's a, it's a two piece exhaust system, but you haven't got to worry about gluing all the pipes and the brackets together and everything. Rear leaf springs integral there with our shock absorbers. You can see there. Rear axle, big old Salisbury axle, front axle, which is a banjo type, and then these big front swivels that are basically very simple to keep it strong. Big chunky steering wheel, the Salisbury diff cover there, prop shafts, tie rod for the steering, rear view mirror, all very nice. And we've got a very, very simplified LT76 gearbox, and then we've got the four wheel drive box there, which is all very, very simplified. But unless you pick it up and look at it underneath, you're not going to see that anyway. Um, and here we go. This is the last bag of sprues. Take these out. So here's our wheels. And as we can see, we've got the wheel nuts, we've got the sensor caps, and we've got the holes around the wheels. So when you put those on there, you're going to see through into that. So you need to paint that black, as I mentioned, when we look at the instructions. And then we've got our fan here battery that's the center hubs for the wheels and then there's the little strap down for the spare wheel i think and then here we've got a couple of spare wheels so we're not going to use one of them but um it's, it says in the instructions you don't use one of them so there you go and then we've got the safari roof there which has got all these holes that need to be drilled or not if you choose not to fit certain parts you don't have to and that's just going to fit on top of there like like so. In fact, the sprues in the way I can't get on, but it goes a bit further forward, and that's just separate roof panel there to go on. And then I said we're on, we counted six seats, there's nine. So, yeah, we've got plenty of seats to be going on with. Um, and then we've got our left and right hand drive dashboards there, which is very nice. Um, and as I say, we've got these center consoles here, transmission covers. And it's giving us different ones for left and right hand drive. And I'm not sure that's correct. I think whatever it is, if it's left or right hand drive, it should have that one with the gear stick there. And then you've got the um, the four wheel drive and the ratio sticks there to the one side. I've got a feeling that's the four wheel drive and that's the ratios. But please tell me if I'm wrong. Um, and then we've got another lot of bench seats here. This is the lower dash panel you can see with the... It's got heater vents in it there, and it's got that blank panel in the center. Got a gear stick, there's our grab handles for the back onto the rear cross member, and that's the subframe for the rear seats, should you wish to use that one. And then you've got the, the side mountings here for the side seats. There's the bases for the side mounts for the side facing seats. And then on our last sprue, we've got the radiator, radiator shroud. There's the air intake for the air filter sump. Front cover, we've got our pulley there with our fan belt, oil filler, that looks like it's the top hose, distributor, bottom hose, um, oil filter or fuel filter is that. Then we've got the master cylinder there and then we've got our Solex carburetor or Stromberg carburetor which has seen better days in my opinion. <laughs> and there we go. So that 
is basically that. So that is the Revell 124 scale Land Rover Series 3 long wheelbase station wagon kit number 07047 it's available from antics for 25.95 it's available on amazon it's available on ebay it's available anywhere where you go to buy models so i hope you've enjoyed that that's the first video for this channel if you have liked it please give me a like um and if you'd like to see this built for a beginner so you can follow along then please then um make a comment below if you want to add to this video about the comments about I've made, I'm not too sure about stuff with the left and right hand drive and that, then uh, feel free to do so. But um, yeah, if you want to see this built as a beginner's beginner's build, let me know. I'll build it on this channel. If I hear nothing, I may just close the channel down and carry on with my other channel, which is called Nigel's Modeling Bench. So um, let me know what you think, guys. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all soon. Bye for now.